Hey everybody, it's Kendall from the Recording Lounge Podcast again, doing another video about saturation and compression. Now I get a lot of questions about saturation and compression, how they work together, which one's better for this, which one's better for that, how do I set the compressor, and of course the only answer I can truly give is it depends. Um, but today I'm going to show you a great example of something that I call the transient life cycle and how these things sort of work together. Now again, if you're in an analog studio, if you're working in a tape environment where you've got a console, you've got outboard gear, the saturation thing you wouldn't really have to worry about so much because it would just happen naturally. You've got outboard gear, you've got a tape machine, you've got a console, and then when you go back to mix it, you've got a console, you've got another tape machine, you're mixing down to half inch, you've got, you know, all this analog gear in, in the mix, and so a lot of that sort of saturation just happens and you don't have to think about it. Well, in the box, we have to think more about it. Where do the saturation plugins go, and do we need them at all? And um, I would argue that saturation is one of the best things you can do for your mix to make your life easier and just to get a more glued, gelled mix. It's one of the brilliant reasons why analog gear works so well is that it takes care of a lot of things that the box doesn't always take care of because the... The box is great. I mean, mixing in the box is my preference, but it's not adding or removing anything from your sound. Okay, contrary to what a lot of people think, that the box adds this, like, digital sound. No, the truth is that it's not adding anything, whereas the analog gear was adding harmonic saturation. It was adding tone. It was adding, you know, color to the sound for you, completing a step that now you almost have to do in the box. So to show an example of this, I've got a snare drum here, and I've got a raw snare drum, and I've processed it a handful of different ways just to show you the result on the waveform as well as what it sounds like. So I've got this snare drum, right? Okay, it sounds good. It's a Black Beauty snare. It's hard to beat in the studio. And... I wanted to show how, you know, different types of processing would affect this signal. So first I compressed it with a fast attack, uh, 1176 style compressor. Okay, that's cool. You know, that sounds good, but it does lose a little bit of punch. It get, definitely gains some more body. Uh, but it loses a little bit of, like, smack, and I like that smack. Um, now, again, in the right context, that might be perfect. I mean, that sound right there could be the perfect snare sound for the project you're working on. I just want to reiterate that. Now, if you wanted to get more punch, you'd generally slow the attack down. So I then compressed it again uh, with a slower attack. Now, I, I should clarify, I compressed the raw snare file with a slow attack. So these are all going back to the raw snare file. So here's that snare again uh, with a slow attack fast release compressor. The raw. Now what I've done here is level matched all of these files to a maximum peak of negative three. And I'm doing that just to show you that a slow attack, uh, even though it does add more punch, it naturally adds more transient. As you can see, here's our original. When we compress with a fast attack, we get a sort of lopping off of this transient, and then when it's turned up, it goes back to this sort of, um, this part of the wave, the decay and release of the waveform uh, and sustain are turned up because you've now turned down the attack of the original. Now when you slow down the attack, this curve is sort of created here. You get a slower, uh, punchier transient, uh, but then this is actually sort of lessened um, or, or at least left about the same as what it was before after you use the makeup gain. Um, so that is cool and all, but it gives us now this sort of spiky transient. Uh, and, if, and if, again, in modern times, if you've seen some of my other videos where I'm talking about mixing for loudness, that's something we have to consider. Um, it really is, you know. We can't just have everything super punchy all the time. We have to contain it. Um, otherwise, our entire mix, it, it's just going to be out of control transients, and we won't actually be able to get any loudness of it, out of it without just terrible mastering work. Um, 
So, okay, let's see what uh, the normal snare sounds like with just saturation. Raw. Okay, so that's cool. It definitely has a lot of body. In, in this test, it has the most body brought out. That uh, transient is clipped the most, and this sort of uh, decay and sustain and release of the wave is now brought way up. Um, but it again, it kind of lacks punch because you're chopping off that transient. So I thought, okay, well, let's saturate and then compress with a slow attack. So then we get this. Well, we keep running into that same problem that we ran into with the slow attack compressor, where now you have this spiky transient. And yes, you get the punch, but this spiky transient is going to cause you problems in the mix. So what's a guy to do? Uh, or a girl. Um, I now ran the saturation after the compression. So I compressed the same amount as I have been on all these, uh, which is quite a bit. It was like 6 or 8 dB. Um, and then ran into a saturation plugin after. Because I noticed here that this one definitely had the most peak clipping while still sounding pretty natural. I mean, it doesn't really sound like overly compressed or like distorted per se. So I thought, okay, well, let me pull down the saturation a little, compress first, and then saturate. So now we get this. Here's a raw snare. So here's what's interesting about this. I ran loudness uh, measurements on these files. And here's what we get. So all these files are going to be peaking at negative uh, 3, or maybe negative 6. I forget. I think it's actually negative 6. Yep, apologize for that. Uh, so all these files are peaking at negative 6, so they all have the same peak level, and even though, like we've talked about, peak level is kind of useless in terms of loudness. Um, so check out our raw snare. It has an RMS level of negative 14. Our fast attack compressor, although it lopped off some of the uh, transient, we get a little bit more of an RMS level out of it, a little bit more loudness. Our slow attack compressor actually lost us average level, right? Our original is negative 14. Our slow attack compressor actually gives us essentially more dynamic range. Now, our saturation uh, gives us now an RMS level of negative 10, so it brings it up the most, 4 dB more uh, on average, uh, which is quite a bit, but it loses punch because you're lopping off that transient. Um, so if you go to saturation into a slow attack compressor, uh, our RMS is negative 14.8. And it's like, okay, that's, you know, but that's still worse than our original. So, check this out. This is slow attack compression into saturation. You kind of get the best of both worlds, where you take this slow attack compression, which actually increases your dynamic range, and then saturation, which has the most uh, limiting of the dynamic range, and you get this. So you actually do increase your RMS level, you get more loudness, but you retain a lot of that punch that the slow attack compressor does for you. So check it out again. I'm going to A, B through these, or really A, B, C, D, E, F, um, and check, let you check them out as they go along. So I'm going to start up here, just watch which file I'm soloing over here. So here's the raw. Now, to my ear, I've done a lot of listening tests on this on this session, and to my ear, this one consistently sounds the best to me. It has the best of both worlds. It has uh, just enough loudness, but it still has the punch. Um, it doesn't have as much punch as this, but do I really need that much punch? I don't know. Probably not. Um, and it has more punch than this.
just a little bit more, but it has a dB more in average level. That's what's really interesting. Um, even though it sounds slightly punchier than a fast attack compressor, it actually has more loudness um, because you've sort of done less in two stages now. Um, it doesn't really jack with the tone like this one kind of does. For whatever reason, running saturation into the compression, my guess is because the compression is now sort of bringing out, since the compression's after, it's sort of bringing out some of that, like, grittiness that the saturation has added, and that's cool. Um, but in this instance, the saturation is really just acting as a little bit of a clipper for, for this now spiky peak uh, that has popped out. So you get sort of the best of both worlds. And again, if you zoom in and see the waveforms, you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. This is our raw, fast attack, and, uh, you know, the um, saturated one definitely beef up the waveform. These two definitely add a little bit of snap on the front. But this one has sort of the nice combination of all worlds. It's got a little bit more body than, uh, than our original, but a pretty close. But it has this nice, smooth curvature to it where it has the punch, but it's not too pokey like this or like that. And you can hear it. I mean, these sound pokey to the ear. as opposed to this. But it's way more punchy than this. So I hope this has taught you a little bit of something. So the, the moral of the story here is uh, transients go through a life cycle. They go through saturation, compression, saturation, compression. You know, you might get a little bit of saturation on the mic pre, Maybe then you compress it. Maybe then in the mix you use a little bit of saturation. Then you go into a drum bus compressor, and then you go into the master bus compressor. Uh, but my tip for you is to consider saturating after you compress. So on your mix bus, for example, put a compressor into a uh, saturation plugin like Virtual Tape Machines from Stephen Slate. I really love that plugin. Um, if you're doing the compression and saturation on a snare, consider compressing before you saturate um, to get that punch. Now again, it all depends on what you need to do, but at least this has given you some things to consider. Alright guys, check out the podcast. Check out recordingloungepodcast.com. We'll talk soon.